But the thing I wanted to start out with is um, not not so very political. Now, frankly, it's the kind of thing that if you put it on the ballot, it uh, causes Democrats to win elections because it brings out people who tend to vote democratically, and that's uh, decriminalizing pot. But I wanted to take it a step beyond that. Um, they they just recently found a 17, uh, excuse me, it's more than 1,700 years old, 3,700-year-old wine cellar in Israel. It was from 1,700 B.C. It's the oldest wine cellar that's ever, ever been found. It had a personal stash of more than 500 gallons of wine. That's enough for 3,000 modern bottles of wine. Uh, my, my source for this, by the way, if you want to read along, is an article by Kathleen Wilcox over at uh, vinepair.com, V-I-N-E-P-A-I-R.com, slash wine blog, slash, and there's, it's all hyphenated, the latest craze in winemaking, marijuana-infused wine. In fact, that's the headline. The latest craze in winemaking, marijuana-infused wine. And I'm just curious, your experience... With different kinds of pot, I you know, and 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 the the reason I ask this, a I, more and more people are are uh, discovering this. In fact, in in some states, we're finding that more people are smoking pot than are smoking cigarettes. And wouldn't it be nice if there were more people smoking pot than drinking alcohol? Because alcohol is at least in in intoxicating quantities or substantially intoxicating quantities, not good for you. But a glass of wine a day, I, you know, Thomas Jefferson drank one until he died. Um, that's supposed to be good for you. So there's this interesting, there, there, there's this whole interesting dynamic. First of all, there's the carbolizing. When, you, when, when pot is in the plant, if you heat it uh, to, I th- my recollection is around the neighborhood of 270, 280 degrees, you know, above the boiling Fahrenheit above the boiling boiling point, but below the uh, catching on fire point, that that produces a chemical reaction in the plant that potentizes the pot, and this happens naturally in a pipe when you're smoking it, or anytime you apply heat to it, like if you're vaping. But it doesn't happen when you eat it, and so the eating process is quite different. So, uh, for many, eating and tincture formulas uh what the recommendations are and you can read this all over the internet um is that you should first carbolize or carbonize or whatever the word is you know you should heat the pot and so you get these people who are taking you know like a they go down to their pot store in colorado or in washington state and please don't do this if it's not legal where you live or if they have a medical marijuana license as a half million people in california do they go to their local pot store and you'll get some then and get a you know an ounce or so of pot and then they'll put it on a on a on a pie plate or in a pie plate or on a cookie tin and stick it in the in the oven and heat it up and and uh, carbolize or carbonize or whatever the magic word is i'm not a pot expert here i'm just uh, you know in fact that's why i'm asking you what's your been in your experience or what do you know about this and then you take that and you make an infusion, you know, a tincture with it. You, you set it in alcohol for days, weeks, months. Uh, or you can mix it with uh, uh, various types of oils or fats. Coconut oil seems to be one of the big ones. And make everything from uh, uh, pot butter to pot suppositories. I mean, it's just this whole spectrum of stuff. But what really caught my interest in this article by Kathleen Wilcox and the various articles around it was two things. One... Pot has been used during religious rituals, and if anything is going gonna, is gonna to take pot down, it'll probably be that, um, and as a form of anesthesia during surgery, like for 3,000 years, pot and alcohol together. By the way, the most commonly used drug combination in the United States is alcohol and pot. People will smoke some pot, they'll have a glass of wine. Back in tw- the 28th century BC, and that's f- almost 5,000 years ago, the founder of Chinese surgery, Hua To, used, according to this uh, article at vin- vinepair.com, used uh, wine fortified with cannabis resin to reduce pain during surgery. The Aleutian Mysteries, these, this is the cult of Demeter and Persephone in ancient Greece. 
Is it Elysian mis- Elysian fields? The Elysian mysteries? I was. I'm not a, a, a student of uh, ancient Greek. Uh, uh, what would you call it? Uh, it's not a religion. Well, arguably, it was a religion at that time. Anyway, the mythology. Um, and uh, some are suggesting that Jesus was seriously into this stuff. Early Christians, uh, wine enthusiasts. Maybe Jesus even turned that water into wine by do- dropping a handful of pot into it. I mean, who knows? Um, but, you know, without going too Cheech and Chong with you, uh, on you here, uh, I, did, I just, you know, I want to tell you what's going on now in, in oh, and this is another thing, Greek Retsina. We, we had a pot expert on a couple of weeks ago, and he was like, it's all about the terpenes, right? Smell your pot. And you get, you, after a while, you get, uh, oh, this smells really uh, kind of piney. So that produces one particular type of high. And what you're smelling are the terpenes. You're not, you know, THC, CBD, the active ingredients, they don't, to the best of my knowledge, don't have a specific taste or smell. Maybe they do. But it's the terpenes in particular that you get that, that kind of moderate how it, how it works. Um, whether they are, uh, you know, the kind that make you sleepy or the kind that make you giggly or whatever. And uh, this article, it mentioned modern Greek retsina is fortified with toxic terpenes. I don't know how toxic they are, but I've always loved retsina. You go to a, to a Greek restaurant, retsina, you know, normal, normal wine is aged in an oak cask. Retsina is a Greek white wine, which is aged, and normally white wines are not substantially aged, but is aged in a pine uh, barrel. And so the resin, the pine resin, gets into the wine. It's, it's a taste that you know, a lot of people don't like at all, and people who know Greek, Greek Ritzina really know it well. And now I'm really curious. Okay, now I didn't know that Ritzina is Ritzina because of the terpenes. And uh, so, anyhow, but Melissa Etheridge, who has been a guest on this program a number of times, is a, uh, and, and had cancer and went through about a chemotherapy, which led her to pot, which is absolutely great for stopping the nausea associated with chemotherapy. And she has uh, helped a company out in California start a new line of pot wine. It's called No Label. It's through the uh, Vineyard Greenway, or the, I don't know if this is a vineyard or if it's a, a pot company. Actually, I think it's a pot company. Lisa Molino is the uh, founder and farmer. Yeah, so it's a pot place. Uh, She says, many years ago, I tried cannabis-infused wine that a winemaking friend of mine made for his own personal consumption. I loved it. I got the recipe from him and started working on my own batch seven years ago, and she's been fine-tuning it ever since. Now, what she does that's different is she doesn't carbolize the the pot. She just takes raw pot, about a pound of it, and puts it in a barrel of wine, about 50, 50 bottles of wine, and lets it sit for nine months. And when you're all done, she says, uh, two ounces is all it takes. Ironically, my wine tincture is probably helping people drink less and smoke less. She says, I'm a wine lover, and I believe that a glass of wine a day can be medicinal, too. So here's how you get down to just having two glasses, or even one glass, two ounces. That's, that's less than one glass of wine in an evening. And she says, it helps you sleep great. This is the Tom Hartman Program. And being the guy who almost flunked kindergarten because I couldn't take naps, uh, Sleep Great always has gotten my interest, although she says a lot of people for a lot of other conditions are loving this stuff. 